I got a request to do a video on the S6 gas mask or the SR6. So this is the S6 respirator. And um, have a little look at the features on it. So this was the one that replaced the um, light anti-gas respirator of the British Army. And this was in turn replaced by the S10. And interestingly of this mask, there was it was quite a long time before they eventually phased it out. Although the S10 uh, came into sort of use in the mid 80s, it apparently these stuck around for quite a while with reservists before they were eventually all phased out to S10. So, um, most iconic thing of the mask really is the really big sort of bug eyes. It's got a big nose bit on there. And that's the mask itself. So, this particular model was made by Leyland and Birmingham Rubber. Um, but you can get Avon versions of it, but they're all quite similar. Interesting thing as well on this side is that the filter has an inner thread there and then there's an outer thread on it. I don't know if that means you can also put 60mm filters on it, I've never tried it, but I thought it was quite an interesting concept. Sorry, you can't. Um, what I meant was um, you've got essentially an internal ring there. So I'll pop the filter on. So um, this mask was most famously used by the SAS during Operation Nimrod, which was the Iranian embassy siege. Um, now the biggest flaw of this mask is its big eye pieces. Because of the curve on them, it literally makes you feel sick if you're wearing this for a long time, and especially if you try and turn your head, because um, these eyes are really sort of horrible to look through. How the angle of the plastic works. An odd feature of this mask that's quite interesting is the tap inside the mouthpiece. With this you can um, adjust how much air is in the cheek of the mask by blowing into the tap and then screwing it up. And that means that you can basically adjust the cushiony, cushiony section on the outside of the mask to fit your face better. Which is a really interesting feature. This is the only mask I've ever seen that's done that. So I'll put it on and then we can see what the voice diaphragm works like. Alright, hopefully you can see that alright. The voice diaphragm's here. That's also where the exhale valve is. This bit and um, this little bit of rubber around the voice diaphragm. And as I'm saying, it has this horrible fish eye effect where about here in your eyes, everything looks at a different angle than everything else, which is really horrible when you turn your head. It looks like you've kind of got a mirror here on each eye. You know, when you're looking at those fun house mirrors, and oh, this is horrible. Um, it's sort of a motion sickness thing if you are actually running along with it, this would be absolutely awful because part of your vision stays fine, the other part moves, which is a really weird effect. Um, interestingly, there was a prototype that came out called the S8, I believe. They have one at the Bobbington Tank Museum. And the S8 is essentially what would have been the S10, but thankfully Avon designed a much better mask. And the S8 is essentially an S6, but with smaller lenses. Uh, it looks absolutely awful as a mask. I guess the idea is the lenses are closer to the eyes so today before you get a better field of vision. But I'm glad they designed the S10 as they did. Comfort-wise, this mask is quite comfortable. Um, it's not too heavy. But, as I said, the lenses, although they give a good field of view, have this horrible effect that, you know, awful. Um, but the mask's secure enough, it looks quite good, the voice diaphragm isn't awful. It's not a bad mask as mask goes, but these eyepieces really can't put them. It's not too good for shouldering a rifle with either. But there's some information on it for the people who wanted to know about it.